Well, hello everybody. It is the first really rainy day of, uh, of, 20, of the fall of 2018. Uh, as you might have noticed, I, I didn't commemorate it on the last couple of videos, but I finally am I'm wearing my jacket again. It's been a while, all summer I've gone without wearing my jacket, but it's back and uh, so you'll be seeing a lot more of it. But today we are doing something new something exciting, at least I'm excited about it, I hope you are too. We are doing photo recreations, and I hope if this is successful, that it'll be something I do uh, more of, kind of a series, and I want suggestions from you guys on which photos you wanna see recreated. We're gonna have a photo, we're going to be evaluating it and breaking it down, and then doing our best to recreate it. Now those recreations might not necessarily be the exact way the original photographer did it, but it'll be done doing what we can with what we have available to us. So today we are going to try to recreate this awesome image from one of my favorite photographers, Mr. Ben Shirk. So let's jump right into it. Okay guys, so the first thing we wanna do whenever we're trying to recreate an image is do a photo analysis. First thing we do is we wanna gather as much information as possible. See if the photographer talks about the image, whether it be in a social media post, on their website, or some other blog. The best way to get the information you need is to go straight to the source itself. Next, we wanna look at the light. We wanna look at the quality, the quantity, and the direction of the light in the image. Next, we're looking at the pose. Now, the pose is always going to be specific to the body type of the subject you're working with. So that means it may be slightly different than the subject that the original photographer used in their image. Next, we wanna look at background, the setting and the environment. What is the background to the image? What environment is the subject in or the setting? Are there props in the image? What other supporting elements are around the subject? Finally, we wanna look at the post-production. What techniques were used? To create the image, what's the graphic theme or style, and how should we plan to recreate those in our image? Okay, so step one, gather information. Well, I saw this image on Instagram, and if we look at Ben's Instagram post here, we see that he said he used burst mode with very fast lights and then extracted and combined many layers in Photoshop. This gives us great direction in where we will go with our version of this image as it tells us that we'll need fast lights and that we're going to be taking multiple exposures that we'll be extracting and combining in Photoshop. Now we can also go down into the comments section and see if anybody asked any helpful questions that might give us more information. We see there that someone asked about the trails, if they were in PS or if they were done naturally with the swing. He said it could be done naturally in camera, but he used Photoshop. Somebody also asked if it was done in studio or on location, and it appears he did this in his studio, but we will probably do ours on location. Finally, somebody asks what lights he is using, and down below it looks like he said he's using Einstein's, but Godox could give a similar result. Now it just so happens that I have Einstein lights, so that'll work out perfectly. We'll be able to use the same equipment that Ben was when he created this image. Speaking of light, let's go ahead and analyze that. Looking at the quality of the light here, it's fairly harsh, and it looks like Ben was trying to recreate the look of stadium lights here in the field. So we're going to have our lights fairly far away and probably mostly unmodified. As far as the quantity of lights, it appears that we have two, maybe three light sources, but the primary ones being a key light coming from the subject's upper left over on the right side of our screen, and one behind the subject as a kicker or separation light, both of which will be fairly far away, unmodified, and creating a nice shadow and Rembrandt pattern on the subject's face. We might even throw in a third light as a little bit of fill, just so the shadows aren't too dark. As far as the pose goes in this particular photo, it's going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to be combining different images of uh, mostly two different poses with a bunch of bat swings in the middle. So it'll be unique to this image. 
As far as the background and setting goes, we've got a mostly black backdrop with just a little bit of dirt and of course the home plate in the bottom foreground. So that should be pretty easy since we're going to be on location. There will probably be some background elements that we'll have to darken down to black, um, but we will have the dirt and the home plate there naturally. And finally, looking at the post-production, there's obviously going to be a lot of post-production with this particular image. Uh, we are going to be having to add in all of the motion blurs and all of the bat swings in the different areas. Um, and of course, we'll add in those light beams coming down from the top right. All right, guys, we're here at the field. This is Jude. Say hi, Jude. Hi. And Tori's hiding. She's hiding back there. Tori's his mom. I went to high school with. So thank you both for coming out and, and doing this with me tonight. Uh, let me show you the setup we got going. So in the photo we are recreating, uh, I'm gonna turn the uh, camera around really quickly, hold on. Okay, in the photo we are recreating, uh, Ben mentioned he used Einstein, so I've got two Einsteins. I've got one here, this is with a either a 15 or 20 inch, 20 degree grid, I should say, not sure which one. Over here we have the second Einstein, which will be our rim light or kicker light. It's got a 10 degree grid on it, so it keeps it nice and uh, slim there. Now, uh, the light in the photo is pretty hard, so that's why I'm not diffusing these lights at all, uh, kind of replicating stadium lighting. And we're gonna add in the, um, we're gonna add in the light streams coming in from the top right uh, in post later on. So Jude's gonna be standing here. I'm gonna have him swing. I'm not gonna have him swing at full speed. He's gonna be swinging uh, somewhat slow. Yeah, kind of like that. And we're gonna be doing this a few different times so that uh, we can get the bat at different times and, and uh, places throughout the swing. Okay, so we're gonna be uh, doing a, get the, the lights dialed in here first. And then uh, once we get it to where I like it, we'll start with some of the practice swings. Okay, let me just do a test. We're gonna see how that looks. That's oh, looking pretty good. Okay, so I've gotta bring the, uh, the main light. It's not hitting his face uh, dead on yet, so I'm gonna bring it around in front of him just a little bit. Now, the photo is also taken uh, with the camera height being approximately at the batter's, uh, between his waist and shoulders, somewhere in the midsection there. So that's why I have the camera as low as it is. Um, so it's kind of at that same angle uh, to Jude here. Okay, that's looking good. We got the plate there. Everything's coming together nicely. Yeah, okay. So the lighting pattern's looking good, both when he has the bat back behind him, and then after he swings, both those lighting patterns on his face are looking similar to the photo that we see um, that Ben did. So I'm happy with that. And now, I'm just going to uh, have you do a few swings here, Jude. So nice and slow. Ready, one, two, three. Perfect. Let's go ahead and check those out. Now what we're not quite getting, at least not the whole time, is light on the bat itself. We're getting it at the beginning and kind of through the middle, but once it goes behind him, we're not really getting it. But we're gonna try a couple more times first. We'll make some adjustments if we need to. Go ahead and one, two, three, go. Good, and then again. One, two, three, go. Awesome, and let's go ahead and do it again. One, two, three, go. Awesome, let's just check that. Okay, yes, that's not bad. We're actually getting the bat pretty well. A lighter what? Um, sure, let's do a lighter bat. Yeah, let's do a silver bat, and actually go ahead and take the helmet off, just because the photo we're recreating, he didn't have a helmet on, so. Now, one thing we don't have, which I, I do kind of want, is some more fill. It's just very dark. Um, throughout his body right now where the two lights aren't hitting. So I'm gonna grab one more light. We're gonna put it on um, as a fill light um, and we'll see what we can do that. So I'll be right back. So I got the video light here. I have the strobe set up for the fill. I'm gonna put the trigger on and we'll get this going. I'm just gonna do a test here. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay guys, we're finally getting it dialed in here. So we're gonna continue doing some swings here and uh, see what we get. All right, you ready Jude? Go ahead and get set. And nice and slow and smooth swing. Awesome. 
Let's see what we got there. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Ready, nice and smooth. Great, again, just keep doing it. Nice and smooth and slow. Again, there you go. Very good, all the way back. There you go. Very nice, relax for a second. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the shoot. Hopefully we got everything we need. We're gonna head home and uh, we're gonna get this in post-processing. So we'll see you over there. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the office and we are diving right into the post-production here. So uh, what I've done is I've taken all of the images um, and I've culled them down to kind of what I think I'm gonna need to use to create this final image. And so I have these uh, 10 images here with the bat at different positions throughout the swing. And what I've done is I've taken them and I've layered them on top of each other in one file here in Photoshop. So I'm gonna just be working through this. Uh, bear with me as we go along and uh, we'll see what we can do here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blend mode um, of all of these to lighten. And what this allows us to do is it's only going to take the parts from each image that are lighter than the image uh, above or below it. So basically we're going to see all the versions of Jude here from each image coming through. Now, obviously that's quite the mess. Uh, we can't really distinguish what's what in this instance. But now we're going to try to, try to uh, finesse it a little bit. Okay, so first I wanna find kind of the two images that I'm gonna be using for the uh, two faces. So we're gonna use one face when he's um, getting ready to swing and one face after he's swung. We can hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click on any layer to isolate it so that we're only seeing that one layer. I think this one is a good one to use for the very first. I think this one would be a good one to use for the last one. Let me just see if there's a better. So that's the other one we're gonna use. So we're gonna just say this is, we're gonna call this first face and second face. Let's go ahead and add masks to all these layers. So this is kind of our um, beginning and end, our, our front and our first face and, and uh, second face. And if we look at Ben's image here, you see this is kind of what we're, we're working with. So we're gonna have the very first one and we're gonna have the second one. First of all, on this one, I want to clone out the bat um, that's going through him. So let's go ahead and just paint this out. We'll still have his hands there coming down a bit. Um, and I think that's a good place to start. So now let's go ahead and take a look at these layers. So there's a good bat layer there. We're gonna take that, paint with white over the bat. And again, just referencing back to Ben's, you know, you see little um, figments of his arms throughout with the bat. So um, I think we'll kind of try to replicate that as best we can. And in order to do that, we might use a bigger brush, a nice soft, bigger brush, maybe a lower opacity, and just take it away on the edges a bit. And that's something we can finesse as we get towards the end too. We'll just kind of rough it in for right now. All right, here we've got the bat going down below. And what we may end up needing to do is um, change the layer type back to normal, for some of these at least, so that we can see uh, the bat and the parts that we want. And then it's just gonna be a matter of um, selecting and selecting and um, extracting around it. And it doesn't have to be completely perfect because we're gonna be adding motion blur and things like that to the bat that's gonna cover up some of the selections. Okay, moving on to the next layer. Let's see what we got here. All right, so that's a good one. So we'll go ahead and... All right, so we got that. And let's take a look at the next one. Now, right now we can see the whole background with the fence and all that. We're gonna be taking all that out um, by the time we finish this image so that 
it's just a black background like you see here on Ben's. So we have to kind of fill in these areas with the bat. And we can do that a couple different ways. First way we can do it is by going back to our photos that we have available and trying to find uh, versions that have the bat kind of in those places. Now the other thing to realize, keep in mind too, is that my model here is younger. Um, ben was with a high school senior who has presumably been playing baseball for at least a good few years um, at the high school level and um, has that much more experience in practice. Uh, with my model being a little younger and less experienced, the uh, form and technique might not be there as much, so we'll just have to work with that as best we can. So what we'll do is we will open this in Photoshop, bring it over here in its own layer as well. we'll put it to lighten, add the mask, and then we'll bring it in. So there's one bat there. Kind of need one, at least one more here. And I'd like to get one kind of here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. A couple more images to see if we can get it uh, to fill in this spot. Now when you're doing this, if you ever lose track of which layer you're looking at or want to work with, you can use the move tool, right click on the area, and it tells you what layers are there. So here we have three layers that comprise this spot, first face, second face, and Jude Baseball 151. So I think, let's try Jude Baseball 151 and see if that's the one that we want. Yep. Okay there. So I'm just going to fix this a bit okay so let's see what other images we have to work with to kind of fill this spot so what we can do here is we can actually use that same one and that layer is Jude 136 there it is what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this layer so there's the copy and then we're going to just rotate it. And we're gonna rotate it kind of from where the fulcrum of his hands are, about right there. So we can move the center point right there. And when we rotate it, it'll rotate around that center point. So then we just bring it down and we can fill that area right there, give or take. And we're gonna do this a couple times probably to fill these other spots. And by the time we add motion blur and all that, you won't even know. So what we'll do is we'll add some motion blur. We're gonna go to filter, blur, motion blur. We're gonna try this. And we're gonna make that motion blur in the direction that the bat is swinging. So roughly, let's try that. There we go. And that looks like a pretty good amount. We can play with the amount to see if we want more or less. We'll keep it about there for now, that's fine. Now just to help us out, I am going to start blackening out the back here. Okay, so there we have it, and uh, for those of you wondering what the heck all that crazy rainbow stuff was, well, that is what is called a solar curve, and it is one of the most invaluable tools you can have, especially when you're working uh, with an image like this, where you're basically drawing with black over things that are already dark, and it can be hard to see where you've actually painted true black. So by making this solar curve, it shows everything. 
Um, and it's very important, especially if you're doing images for competition or if you're just going to print these images, particularly if you're spending a lot of money on a print because it's easy to miss areas that you did not color in on the computer. And then when you print them and they come back after you've spent 200, 300, however many hundreds of dollars on this beautiful wall portrait, it's going to be all splotchy, black and splotchy, and it's gonna look horrible, and you're gonna to have to uh, fix it and reorder it. So by using solar curves, it shows you everything that's there. And it's pretty simple to make a solar curve. All you gotta do is create a curves adjustment layer, and then make about five or six points, and bring them in opposite directions all the way to the top and bottom, so you get this big squiggly line. And that's all there is to it. I put it over the top of all my layers and then I can turn it off and on as needed so I can see places that I might have missed. All right, so I think what I wanna do is if we look at Ben's, you know, he's got a nice circle of the bat around uh, his subject, around the player. And right now ours is very front heavy. So we're gonna redistribute some of the, the uh, swings a little bit more behind him just so we can kind of create that circle around as well. Now we're gonna um, probably add a couple more bats and some more motion blur. So we're getting the basic shape down pretty well where the bats are and how they're going around him and where he is positioned um, compared to himself. So let's go ahead and continue on with some of the bats and getting the uh, motion blur where we want it and all that. We have a great shape going on here with the bats and the motion blur is coming along. We'll add it over on this side. So let's go ahead and actually do that now. Okay, so now I think we're gonna add a little bit of blur to this bat here. So I guess I'll, I'll blur out this one too. Because he's kind of got all these blurred out and I like the way that looks. Before I go any further, I'm going to um, work a little bit more on getting the background completely black just so I can really see what I'm working with. Okay, so let's pull up the black layer that we started and obviously the masking is not going to be the same now that we've moved things around. So I'm going to actually just erase on the layer itself and I'll erase up from the bottom just so we have this here, okay. Now, there is an easier or a more accurate way to do this. And I think that's probably what I'll do is I'm just gonna make a clipping path around uh, Jude here and the bats. And then that way I can just fill the other areas with black. And I think that'll be the easiest way. Okay, so there we have it, and 
Now what we can do is we basically have the silhouette of Jude and the ground and the bats. We can make a selection of it and then invert that selection and we can just paint in black on this layer all around him. We'll be able to adjust this as we go along as well. Um, since the bat's really close to the edge here and we have extra space back there, I'm just uh, going to expand the canvas out on that side. Okay, that'll be fine there. All right, so I want to add a couple more bats. So if we look at Ben's here, he's got some blurry bats coming all the way up over the top here. Um, so we're going to add those in. Not too shabby. So I took a little break there just to figure out the best way to do this bat blur. And this is what I came up with right here. And we're going to still maybe tweak it a little bit. But what I ended up doing to achieve this is I stamped up everything into a new layer. And then I applied a radial blur to the whole image. Okay, so it gives us this. And then from there, we're able to mask around everything else that we don't want in order to just get this part blurred right in there. I also then changed this blending layer to uh, lighten uh, or blending mode to lighten so that all of the other bats that we've worked on come through. I think uh, we've got a little bit of this fence showing through and these artifacts in here. And we can see them even clearer when we use the solar curves. So we need to get rid of those. That's where we're at so far. We're almost there. Just need to do a couple things. We need to soften the edge between the black and the ground. So we'll do that. And then we will add in the lighting effects. And then we will just do some toning, um, basic toning of the finished image at the end. So let's go ahead and soften this bottom edge. Okay, that's coming along. I'm just looking now at the, uh, this bat's kind of catching my eye a bit where it just ends. I don't like that. Let's see what we can do. Okay, let's look at Ben's. Pretty close. He definitely has, um, you know, his his uh, motion blur of the bat isn't perfect circle, which is okay. I have a feeling I know how he did his, but I'm also okay with how we did ours. Okay, let's go ahead and get the stadium lights put in there. Okay, and really the last thing that Ben has that we have yet to do is, if you look here, we zoom in, uh, he uses uh, brushes and, and puts some dirt by the feet and a little bit being kicked up here. And we can do that as well. All right, well, I think we've come pretty far, gotten pretty close to what Ben's achieved here. And um, I think the last thing we're gonna do is just a little bit of toning. But 
well, all in all, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you know, we could crop it similar to the way Ben has his crop, which would be... Looks like it's close to an 8x10. Alright, so that's pretty much it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Not too shabby. Please leave any questions down in the comments if you have any, um, or any thoughts that you have. And uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. We'll be sure to see you next time, and leave suggestions for other photos you'd like to see recreated down in the comments as well. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.